Hey guys, it's Todd and Mark from Like-Minded Lunatics bringing you another Todd Honks Mark. So I'm not gonna explain the entire thing. If you haven't seen the previous Todd Honks Mark, go check that out. Yeah. Right up there, you can do it right there. Uh, but basically, dude, you didn't grow up with punk rock, and I so I not. thought it'd be fun to show some bands to you. And the idea is to show you different pockets, so different regions, different time periods, so that we can try and get a better understanding of what punk is. Mm, yes, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Last time, we looked at one of my favorite bands, Operation Ivy, Yep. and uh, this time I thought we would swing that pendulum in another direction okay. in a lot of ways to show you kind of like how big punk is, mm. okay? So the f we are going with uh, today Minor Threat. Okay. Okay. Minor Threat is very different from Operation Ivy for a couple of reasons. One is that they're on the other coast. Okay. Ah. They're a Washington, D.C. band. Okay. So not in California. Uh, also, this is slightly before. So they were a band also for only three years, mm. but from 1980 to 1983. Gotcha. Another major difference is, in our video talking about Operation Ivy, we were talking about how wholesome they were and how hopeful they were. Yes. This is going to be more in line with your worldview. These guys think we're fucked. Okay, good. They I can, are I can angry, with that. and they want to burn the world down. I love it. So... I do not, in fact, know the meaning of this first track, but I think it's more fun to have a reader response perspective on this and just kind of try to figure out what you might think it's about. Okay. So let's take a look at the first one today. And what, what year is this? This would be 1981, I believe. Okay, good. And uh, this is I Don't Want to Hear It by Minor Threat. It's like a minute-long song, oh. so let's play it in its entirety okay. and then just talk about it. Sounds good. Here okay. we go. Minor Threat. I Don't Want to Hear It. Let's do it. Was awesome. Yeah, I mean it's it's angry, it's fast. I thought you'd like it. It reminds me of suicidal tendencies. Yeah, yeah. yeah suicidal tendencies. The uh, oh god, what is that famous track that they do? Uh, institutionalized. Yeah. Basically, I don't want to. You know, just I just want to be myself. Yes. I, I don't want you messing with me. Right. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, and you know, it doesn't even really matter. And I think maybe the. A uh, songwriter might even argue it doesn't even really matter a specific thing. It doesn't nope. seem like they're going for a specific thing. No. A lot of fans have posited that it is uh, religion. It's uh, around religion. Uh, one of the key phrases in there was, um, "You tell your stories. You tell your fucking lies." Oh, but that, okay. But that could be about anything. That could be anything. But power structures in general. That's right. But yeah. they have other songs where the lyrics talk about the. Uh, the artist's uh, mistrust of organized religion. So gotcha. they, they, I guess, tried to apply it there. What I think is cool is that that was like a minute and 47. That feels like the intro to a Metallica song. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There wouldn't have been any lyrics this whatsoever yet. This is the yet. tuning section. That's right. To get to get them in tune. And you know what? Like, when I was a kid, I never went to, like, a proper punk show. You yeah. know, I was always going to these big, long metal shows. We got, like, five bands, and each band's going on for, like, an hour and a half. And it's your whole day. Right. I, I, I look back at these punk bands that have minute and a half long songs, and they only have, like, 12 songs. <laughs> Right. And you're going to wonder, like, how short that night was, you know? You have to have a whole showcase of them. That's right. We have 14 bands. Yeah. It's an hour show. Right. That's why they're called Some 41, because they were the 41st <laughs> band on that set list. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's move on to the next song. Um, and this is Straight Edge, which is also going to help me introduce you to another aspect of this band. 
Now, I have seen the X's on the hands. Yes. Uh, primarily Jason Mewes, I think, was straight edge for a while. Okay, so this band is responsible for that movement. Oh, okay. This song and its name started a movement. Mm -hmm. So this band was... Now, you're not going to like this part of them. Okay. Okay? God, it's religious stuff. I don't particularly care for it either. Right. Well, it's not religious stuff. No. They didn't believe in drinking. Okay. Drugs. All right. Or promiscuous sex. And I'm, I don't agree with this whole ethos. And it, what, but, but they're violent, angry people. All right. So it's not a hippie thing. Okay. If so, the, so that feels religious to me. So here's what they would do. Yeah. And they're atheists. That's weird. But here's what they would do is they would even, because when you go into a bar, they put right. black X's on your hands if you're underage. Correct. So that, that you know you can't buy booze. The bartender knows you can't buy booze. Even if they were overage, they would put X's on their hands and... This is maybe a part overlap you would like about them. Mm -hmm. They would walk around bars just knocking beers out of people's hands. I do enjoy that. That's fun. <laughs> just hitting them like this yeah. is hysterical. Here's a tip for all you underage drinkers out there. Get yourself a Zippo lighter. Okay. And when you go into the bar and they put those big X's on you, yeah. take the inside of the Zippo out, rub the cotton on your hand that yeah. has lighter fluid on it, it comes right off. Nice. Drink all night. And you, you smell like Ronsonol. Yeah, but if but you burn it off, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I'll just say before we listen to this song that they were not responsible for the straight edge movement. Okay. But he did coin the phrase. Straight and, edge. And this, yeah, and, and it was the spirit behind the movement being started by others. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not all in tune with them as far as the drugs, alcohol, and sex. But you'll like the sound. Like the sound. All right, here we go. Yep. Minor threat, straight edge. What year? Uh, I don't know, but uh, th they were only around 80, 80 81, and 82. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I feel the same about this as I do about Dave Mustaine. <laughs> okay, elaborate, please. In that, I love the music. Yeah. The beat's great. The guitar work is fun. Yep. I don't want to listen too much to the lyrics because it's going to annoy me. <laughs> so I'm not going to pay attention to the right. lyrics all that much. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to listen to the... I'm That's good. I'm good. I can crush beers to that, even though they're not going to be drinking beers. I'm 100% I'm drinking. crushing beers to your stuff. There's no way I'm listening to... Without just like, well, you could work out to it. No, <laughs> no, you can't. You can't sustain that level of. <laughs> you can't sustain that. Die of a heart attack. I'm in my mid forties. I get injured. Right. Yeah. With a stupid minor threat record playing <laughs> right. when they find your dead body. So tell me again, Mister Giver, what were you doing? I was doing pistol squats, listening to Minor Threat. Were you on drugs? Well, that was your mistake. Were you on drugs? No, I'm straight edge. That's right. No, I was on pre-workout. It makes my head itch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to the final track here. All right. But the final track is not, act well, it's their song, but I wanted to do a cover. Okay. This is Slayer's cover of this song, and it is a maybe their most famous song. Now, I do know Slayer. Right, seeing them live, so I know Slayer. I, I I don't I don't I don't think I know this song, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, the, the title worries me. It's very troublesome. It's it worries me. So I, 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 don't, get, I don't even know if I want to feature this on the channel. I'll give you a little background. Go ahead. Uh, I promise it's thematic. All right. I wouldn't pick it if it wasn't. Okay. All right. So these. Uh, White dudes in Minor Threat yep. grew up in Washington, D.C., okay. going to a high school where 70% of the population was African-American. Okay. And uh, the singer grew up feeling like whenever he walked into a room, he was going to be hated simply for the color of his skin. So he feels like every minority feels. He was a scrawny kid yeah. who got his ass kicked a lot. Yeah. So he wrote this song. And it was very controversial. Is this proto incel? So his father was a, a, a leftist, uh, a well-educated man who took him on 
book tours with him. He grew up very lefty. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a troublesome song in punk history. Okay. And so if you're going to learn about punk, whether you like it or not, whether you condone the message of it or not, you got to know it. Am I going to feel the same way about this as I do Phil Anselmo? Possibly. All right, let's do it. Let's Slayer, do it. guilty of being white. I don't care for this title. I don't endorse it. Here we go. So this is at the point in the party when the dude walks in <laughs> and I recognize him like, I gotta go. See y'all later. Yeah. <laughs> right. You go. You get one beer in, and you get, I gotta get the fuck. Out I don't even want to listen to this asshole because I know it's gonna be a fucking fist fight. And the Slayer singer at the end alters the lyrics to make it even more controversial. Oh no! Yep. All right. Yep. Well, we're gonna finish it out. Yeah, it's about forty seconds. <laughs> Jesus so Christ. that's the Slayer lyric change. Yeah. Guilty of being right. So when the song came out originally by Minor Threat, mm. it was obviously not received well, even in... The punk the, community. Yeah, in the punk community, it was not received well. And punk community was mostly white dudes. Right. But they just couldn't get behind it. No. Because... Uh, they had morals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> they did like, what? No. <laughs> right. Uh, so later, Slayer, uh, 20 years later, mm. uh, for Undisputed Attitude, their covers album, they covered this. They were huge Minor Threat fans and for some reason felt the need to re-stir the shit mm. and add this right word at the end instead of white and uh, started that all over again in the punk and metal community. And when punk and metal kind of overlap in that Venn diagram, you call it hardcore. Okay, yeah, So yeah. the hardcore community uh, is split 50-50 on this track. Oh, my God. Final thoughts on this track? Well, is I, there any redeeming value or interesting value, or is it just garbage? I'm going to go ahead and say it's just garbage. Yeah. 100%, because I knew dudes like this. And yeah. like I said, I was not being... Hyper, hyperbolic a moment ago, like, I knew guys like this, and you would see them coming into the party, you're like, nope, I'm fucking done. This party's over at this point. I'm going home. Yeah. Um, because there was nothing redeeming about those folks, right. like, at all. Right. So, um, to sort of, like, uh, add a wrinkle, because I feel like our last one, uh, Todd Punk's Mark, was so positive. It was positive. And I want to show you Punk for, like, all of its sides. Mm. This is one of them. And it's different. Yeah. Uh, and I think in terms of punk rock's sound, in terms of punk rock's aesthetics, in terms of punk rock's politics, all those things can be described as messy. Sure. And this is one of the messier parts of punk. Well, and, and I mean, part of the ethos of punk was that anarchic nature, you know, anarchy and all that type of stuff. So it makes sense that you're going to have really disparate ideas Yes. In uh, under that umbrella. Right. You're going to have people that are like, no, 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 we're welcome to everybody because you be who you want. And then you're going to get these racist motherfuckers right. as and well. You know, like you encounter when you're a kid and you're getting into music, you encounter people like, oh, cool. These guys have a cool drum beat. That guitarist is pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, man, these look like badass dude. Well, you, oh, oh, you don't drink. Oh, you're kind of racist. That's weird. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> never mind. I'm going to go. Right. You mean the, the people who did Rain and Blood did this? <laughs> uh, the, the guitarist who did No Sleep Till Brooklyn? Right. Thinks this? And he was in that video, and it yeah. was pretty rad. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, thanks for joining me for a troubling, it was but troubling. hopefully educational uh, trip down Todd Punk's Mark. I love it. Guys, in between now and the next time we talk to you, we're Todd and Mark. See ya.
Hey there, folks. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Todd Punk's Mark. I learned a lot. Hopefully you had fun watching it. We've got a lot of stuff happening here at Like-Minded Lunatics, and I want to take a moment just to tell you about some of those things. We've got a television show that airs every Friday night, 10 p.m., CST on Austin Music Television. You can't watch those episodes anywhere other than uh, either streaming live as they air, and all the instructions on how to do that is in every description uh, here on YouTube, but you can also view the library of the previous ones and all subsequent ones if you become a patron. Uh, so please check out our Patreon site. Uh, we also just formed a partnership with Alamo Draft House here in Austin. So if you're in the Austin area, we're going to start doing live music video reaction shows at Alamo Draft House. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have beverages, hang out together. It'll be a really good time. For all the information on those live shows, please just go to our Facebook page. Make sure you like and follow us, and we post all the information for those uh, over on Facebook. So as we wrap up, uh, I'm, I'm a metal guy, a rock guy. That's been established, but I'll, I'll fade us out by playing like the only punk riff that I know. Are you ready to go? Here we go. Let's do it. 